God with all of our heart and we praise him for who he is, who he is. He is wonderful. Praise God. I know it's I know it's cold up there in Pennsylvania, Wes. I know it's cold up there in in Connecticut, Andy Mac. I know it's cold in Chicago, Illinois, Emma Williams. And I know it's cold where many of you are. It's cold out here. I'm looking out of, out my window. The lake is frozen. We're in Georgia, ladies and gentlemen, and the lake is frozen. But God is on the throne. Hallelujah. God is on the throne. What a mighty God we serve. I want to give an extension of greeting to all of our Facebook followers who are following us live on Facebook today. Praise God. We thank God that you've taken the time out to be with us. We thank God for wherever you are for taking time out for worship. This is the online church. It's different. Ladies and gentlemen, it's different from First Baptist. It's different from Second Pentecostal. Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to worship God. We want you to enter into the presence of God and to hear what God has to say for you. We want to honor the Holy Spirit and welcome him. We want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And we can do this in 45 minutes. We can do this. And we want God to so supercharge your life that you know that you know that you know that you're loved and that you are blessed. And so we are recording these services every morning, every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. The Back to Basics Online Church comes on live and we record our messages and then we send them out throughout the whole world. We were blessed last week. A young lady from the Netherlands was watching and people from Africa. And so we just praise God. People from Jamaica watching our services. And then we don't try to do anything different. We just want to present Jesus Christ without commercials, without begging for money, without grieving your spirit. And we want to present a word of God that's going to take you over the top to get you from under where you are and get you over the top. We want to present the word of God that is brings freedom. The word of God brings freedom. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. And so we praise God and we thank God. We'd like to ask you all right now to kindly mute your phones so that there will be no disturbance in the service. And then after the service is over, we ask that you unmute your phone. And then we can ch chat and chew and talk a little bit. Praise God. So at this time, unmute your phones. If you don't know how to do that, push star six, star six. And I think that will unmute your phones. Anyway, we just bless God. We thank God. This is a wonderful day. We're starting a new year. It's the first Sunday in the year 2018. What a way. Let's start off. Let's start off, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to get rid of all that baggage that we brought into this new year. That stuff that uh, we failed to leave behind in 2017, we're going to leave it. Last week, I preached on the subject, press on, keep on pressing on. And we talked about forgetting those things which are behind, stretching for those things which are ahead. And I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And the Lord has given me a message today, and he wants you to get rid of that baggage that is holding you down. Some of you are carrying baggage that's holding you down. We're going to get we're going to get personal. We're going to get in your face. The Holy Ghost is going to get in your face and in my face. He got in my face yesterday when I was praying for this message. And and God's got some things he wants you to do. And if you will hearken to this and if you stay online, no, don't quit. Don't go to another uh, station. Uh, don't jump church. Don't be a church hopper. Stay right where you are because there's freedom today. There's deliverance. There's a blessing coming to you from God. Those of you on Facebook, uh, you just stay where you are. Gather your family around. 
And, and uh, Pastor Carter is going to be bringing you a message from the Lord in a moment from now. And this message, I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, this message is going to set somebody free. It might be you. Uh, I preached it to myself already. God has set me free from some things. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a day of liberation. This is a day of victory. And so if you've been looking for a victory in your life today, this is the day you will get your victory as you listen to the word of God and as you apply the word of God to your life. And so we want to start off with prayer. Uh, before prayer, we greet all of you again, all of our friends, uh, all of you. I see you in the chat window. Please feel free to put your chat, uh, your comments in the chat window. We thank all of you who are visiting us via Facebook, visiting us through the back of the basics go to me channel. And we just thank God. And for those of you who will watch this message via tape video on our website, www back to basics ministry dot wordpress dot com we give god the glory and honor and we want to say we love you we love you we're not trying to compete with any church we are just standing in the gap god has raised up this ministry to stand in the gap many of you don't attend church many of you don't attend a brick and mortar church many of you have been hurt by the church bruised by some pastor. Many of you have been disillusioned, frustrated. Many of you have just given up on the church. And, and many of you are in transition. Some are sick and shut in. Some of you can't get out. Some of you are just plain snowed in. Up in Connecticut, you're snowed in. Erie, Pennsylvania, hey, Matt, you're snowed in. But we thank God that you're snowed in because today, because you've been snowed in, and you came on this channel, you're going to get blessed. I guarantee you, God is going to bless you today. So let's pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We give praise to you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. There's none other like you. We lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I, I call the church to fellowship. I call the people into your presence in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you stretch forth your mighty hand, bless, heal, deliver, set free, break every yoke of sin and bondage. We just thank you, Father. We bless you. We thank you, Lord, that we have people online today from the Northeast all the way down into Florida. We pray that you'll bless them, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we love you. We praise you. We honor you. We worship you. You are worthy to be praised. Move, Holy Spirit, rise up in us like rivers of living water. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thanks again, neighbor. This is the worship where I am church, the Back to Basics online church. It's different. It's different. It's different. The, the, we don't get to have the fellowship with one another face to face but we're, we're together here via the internet, via the cell phone, uh, and we can fellowship with one another. I see a lot of people who are online today from different parts of the country, and others will join us from the nations, and we have one thing in common. We love the Lord. We love the Lord, and we seek his face, and we're not ashamed to attend the online church. Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you what you get from the online church will be life changing. Not necessarily doesn't have to be this online church, but I recommend that you contact my friend, Pastor Paul Begley in West Lafayette, Indiana, and, and fellowship with him. God is raising up people and raising up online churches to reach the people who don't normally attend church. 67% of Americans do not attend church. Now, I don't know what the percentage is in Europe or in Africa or in South America, but 67% of Americans do not attend church. God is concerned about you. God does love you. 
God does want to bless you. God wants to meet your every need so you're at the right place at the right time. Today, I want to talk about probably one of the most powerful, challenging messages you've ever heard because it's going to challenge you at your very core. I want to talk about the danger of unforgiveness. The danger of unforgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay online. Do not uh, get offline. Don't flick, flip to another channel. Don't get disgusted. Don't leave. Stay right where you are. This message will set you free. The Holy Ghost will set you free. If you will pay heed to this message and if you will apply it to your life. God gave me a message. He said he wanted to me to minister in the area of unforgiveness. Oh, God's heart is grieved, ladies and gentlemen. God knows you love him. God knows so many people love him. But there are so many people who are angry, who have been hurt by somebody. Somebody messed over you. Somebody did this to you. And there are so many people in the body of Christ. The church is full of people today from wall to wall, from the pulpit to the door of people who are unforgiving, unforgiving, ladies and gentlemen. And this grieves the spirit of God. This grieves the Holy Spirit. Unforgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, paralyzes the Holy Spirit, as powerful and as mighty as God is, as powerful and as mighty as the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Death could not hold Jesus. The grave could not contain him. But as powerful as the Holy Ghost is, unforgiveness prevents the Holy Spirit from completing his work. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. I beg you to listen today to this word. This word, it will set you free. It will take you to where you need to be. It will open doors that have been slammed in your face. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many of you, you have sickness in your body, disease in your body, infirmity in your body, You've been praying for healing. You're praying for healing. You're taking all kinds of medication, all type of therapy. You've tried this. You've tried that. And you still don't have your healing. You don't have your deliverance. Ladies and gentlemen, unforgiveness. We all suffer from unforgiveness. Every one of us from the pulpit to the door, from the White House to my house and where there's unforgiveness, we block the Holy Spirit from completing the promises of the Word of God. So listen carefully and apply this lesson today to your life and get set free. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe with my heart, I believe in my sanctified heart that this lesson is going to set a lot of people free. Some of you are listening. You've got cancer in your body. You've gone through radiation, you've gone through therapy, uh, you've gone through chemo, and some of you have cancer that has recurred in your body. There are some of you who have high blood pressure. You've got this disease, arthritis, arthritis and rheumatism, ladies and gentlemen. And we give those diseases, we give those sicknesses the green light to destroy us when we don't forgive others. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to forgive others. Visualize Jesus on the cross. Listen to his words on the cross. Before he died, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When Jesus cried out from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. God has to forgive. God will forgive. God wants to forgive. God is still honoring that cry of Jesus on the cross. 
And that is why you and I are here today. But ladies and gentlemen, God wants us healed. He wants us healthy. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. And many of us are robbing ourselves of life. I'm not doubting your Christianity or your salvation. You're saved. You're, you're doing great works. But many of you are dying and cutting your lives short, cutting your ministry short because of unforgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, God said in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. I have great plans for you. But God cannot bring those plans to fruition if you harbor sin in your heart, if you have unforgiveness. So here's what I want you to do right where you are right now. If you can grab a piece of paper, I want you to take the next minute, the next 60 seconds right where you are. Don't get offline. Don't uh, flip to a commercial. Uh, don't answer any text messages. Uh, don't download anything uh, on the web. Stay right where you are. Take a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper, find something you can write on. Get a pen or a paper. And I want you in the next 60 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, in the next 60 seconds, I want you to write down on a piece of paper. Please do this. Everyone, everyone who has ever hurt you. Write down on a piece of paper, everyone, the name of everyone who has ever hurt you. 60 seconds, go. You're writing down the names of people who have hurt you. You're going back over your life and write the names of people who have hurt you. If I've hurt you, write my name. You, I give you my permission. Write my name. On my list, I wrote my own name. All the times I hurt myself. Write down the names of people who have hurt you. Could be your mother. Could be your father. Could have been your grandparents. Could have been your wife or your first wife or your first husband. Could be your wife or your husband. Could be your children. Could be your boss. Could be a classmate. Could be your best friend. Write down the name of the person or the names of the people who have hurt you. Be sincere. Be serious. And be honest. Be honest, ladies and gentlemen. Make a list of past hurts and who hurt you. Write their name and write down what they did to you. And you don't have to share it with anybody. Husband and wife, as you're listening to this program today, you don't have to share it, please. And, and wife, don't be looking over your shoulders, husband. Cut the brother a break. Write down the name or the names of the people who have hurt you and what they did to you. And then fold that list. Just fold it. Just fold it. Just take that list and fold it. Okay, and then we will go on. I have to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, this is not something you or I want to do. Generating a list of past hurts that included the names of people who inflicted those hurts would require us to get brutally and absolutely honest with ourselves. Doing so could prove to be exceedingly painful. You might not be prepared for the honesty or the pain. You might not be ready to forgive. A life spent practicing unforgiveness toward those who have wounded us feeds that malignant growth in our soul. Ladies and gentlemen, a lifetime practicing anger towards those who have hurt us is one of the chief causes of cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this again. There are all kinds of cancers, but some are caused by unforgiveness. You don't learn this in medical school. You don't get this in nursing school. But you get it from the school of the Holy Ghost. If you harbor iniquity in your heart, if you harbor 
unforgiveness, if you refuse to forgive, you're opening up yourself for cancer, arthritis, high blood pressure, stroke, you name it, heart attack, you name it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you continue to harbor bitterness towards somebody because they did you wrong, you are a walking time bomb. Many of you, if you don't repent and forgive, you're cutting your life off. You're cutting your ministry short. You're cutting Sure, the opportunities that God has before you, the great things he has for you and for your family. Why? Because somebody hurt you, they did it to you, and you can't get over it. You are publicly humiliated, you are ashamed, you are hurt, and you can't get over it. And ladies and gentlemen, there are millions of Christians all over the world. We're not talking about worldly folks. We're talking about millions of Christians who have who love the Lord and have entered into this new year with unforgiveness in their heart. You just can't get over the fact that he did what he did or she did what she did or they did what they did. Well, today you can be set free. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost is hovering over us to set us free. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and live with him and he with me. The Lord wants to come in and set you free. And so I encourage you, as you take a look at that list of people who have hurt you, and I visualize my list of the people who have hurt me. I mean, I've had some people who have really done a number on me. And I know I've heard others, so I'm on people's list. But bless God, bless God, as you give this list to God today, and as you practice what the Lord is saying in this message today, you'll be set free. Not only will you be set free, but you'll set those people free, and you will open the door, ladies and gentlemen, for your healing, for your blessing, for your deliverance. It just might be some people have not received the breakthrough in their physical healing because of unforgiveness. But if you will forgive that person who hurt you and tell God you forgive that person who hurt you or you forgive those people who hurt you, watch and see how the Holy Spirit will usher in the healing, the blessing, the raise, the uh, promotion, uh, he will bring those children home, those wayward kids. Watch what God will do when you open the door by forgiving others. The scripture teaches us we're not to let the sun set on our wrath. So many people go to bed at night angry and bitter at someone who did something to them. Ladies and gentlemen, while you're sleeping, cancer's growing in your body. Adrenaline is growing in your body, negative adrenaline, uh, disease is festering in your body while you're sleeping on a situation of being hurt and not forgiving the one who hurt you. You are doing yourself more harm than the person who hurt you. Most people who hurt you don't even realize they did it. And many Christians are angry with people who don't even know what they did to you. But yet we say we love the Lord, we worship God, we praise the Lord. Well, if you love the Lord, Jesus said, you'll keep my commandments. God tells us in his word to forgive those who have harmed us. So we say to you, forgive for your own spiritual and emotional health. If you want to grow spiritually and emotionally this year, Starting today, forgive everybody and anybody, whether they are living or dead. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Many people who hurt us are long gone. They're dead, but we still have that anger in us, that festering. Forgive them. Let them go. Let them go. Just let them go. Forgive them. Confess to God that you forgive them and let it go. Or if anyone is living 
who has hurt you, no matter what it was, let it go. Confess, God, I forgive so-and-so. Well, Pastor Carter, you don't know what they did to me and you weren't there. No, I wasn't, but let it go. Because I see Jesus, hallelujah, the son of the living God who left glory to come down and to live on earth for 33 years, to die for sinners, wretched wretches like you and me. And he forgave us of our sins. He covered every sin. And now he expects us, if we're to follow him, if we're to be true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must forgive others. Forgive those people who slammed the door in your face. Forgive those people who did not give you a promotion. Forgive that woman who backstabbed you and stole your husband. Forgive that man who stole your wife. Forgive that person who robbed you. Forgive that person who shot you. Forgive that person who left you in a wheelchair. Forgive. Don't harbor any bitterness towards anybody. And when you forgive with your whole heart, watch what God will do. God is waiting, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. So it's up to you to take this word and do something with it. Apply it. Apply it. Facebook family, apply this word. Take a look at your list and go down that list today and say, I forgive everyone on this list. Now, here's a point I need to make. There is no such thing as forgive and forget. We are not made to forget our minds. There are things we, we can't forget. We can't forget these things. We need the Holy Ghost to help us to forget those things. The scripture says, forgetting those things which are behind and stretching for those things that are ahead. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's a high calling to forgive others. But if you're going to be stuck on hurt, stuck on who hurt you, stuck on what stuck on what they did to you in 1960, and you can't stretch to 2018 and live a new life in a new day, if you're still letting the hurts of people paralyze you and grip you and cause you not to do anything, not to have any kind of positive productivity. You need the Holy Ghost to help you and you need to come clean, ladies and gentlemen, and ask God, God, help me. Be honest with God. He searches us. The scripture says, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way on everlasting. Ladies and gentlemen, when you ask the Holy Spirit to search the light in your heart, to illumine your heart, to shine his light in your heart and see if there be any wickedness in you and see if there be any unforgiveness, he will find some. And when he reveals it, repent, repent, repent. Don't fight the Holy Spirit. Don't fight the whole, look here, some of you are 60, 70 years old. It's getting late in the evening. It is too late to fight the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, Pastor Carter, I was baptized when I was 13. I've been in church for 50 years. Yes, and you you were baptized when you were 13. You've been in church for 50 years, but you can still go to hell. You can still bust hell wide open. Why? Because of disobedience to the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, Take my take the word now and do something with it. Don't wait to stand before the judgment and have the Lord say, hey, you heard the word. I ask you to repent. I ask you to forgive those who hurt you, but you refuse. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a terrible day when a lot of so-called Christians stand before the Lord and have to face the judgment and face condemnation because they were too proud and too stubborn to forgive others. 
ladies and gentlemen, I have to forgive. I don't care what people have done to me. I have to forgive. You have to forgive. It is no uh, robbery of our manhood or our pride to not forgive. Cast that pride out the door. Kick that pride out. I would rather be right with God than to have pride living in my household. And so forgive, forgive others. Yes, it's hard to forget, but forgive. And, and I, I, th I praise God that we can't forget sometimes because uh, not being able to forget enables us to, to see that person coming that second time. When that old devil comes that second time, and tries the same old thing, you know, hey, devil, you tried this before. I remember, and the scripture says, we're not unrighteous. We're, we're, we're not ignorant of his devices. And so because you can't forget, that's a good gauge. Don't let the devil do it to you again. Don't let him use those people to do it to you again, but be forgiving. And then, ladies and gentlemen, there are some people in your life, you've got to forgive them and you've got to let them go. You've got to forgive them to the place where you've got to let them out of your life. There are certain people in your life who should not be there. You know they're troublemakers. You know they mean you no good. They've done you wrong and you're forgiving them, but you keep on hanging out with them. And I know how some of you are. Yes, because I think I can get them saved. Ladies and gentlemen, if they keep doing you wrong and you know it's a bad relationship and you know they're going to they're going to cause you to sin or sin in your heart, let them go. Forgive them and release them. I'd rather have a relationship that is distance than to be close to somebody who intends me harm all the time. And ladies and gentlemen, God has given us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And so if God says, cut that person loose, cut them loose. I've had to cut people loose out of my life. There are Christians who have had to cut me loose out of their lives because the relationships were not harmonious, were not congenial. We clashed. We caused trouble for one another. And there are people in your life who are pure troublemakers forgive them release them have nothing to do with them well Pascal, that, that makes you think you're better than anybody look i'm trying to give you something that's going to set you free and you're going to contend with that i would rather give you something that's going to set you free now than to have you stand before god in the judgment and having him confine you to the lake of fire because you were so blessed God stubborn to do it when you had a chance. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, many Christians are going to go to hell. Many, many, I'm going to say it. Many Christians are going to go to hell because they cannot forgive. Well, Pastor Carter, don't you believe once saved, always say no. And the Bible doesn't believe it either. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not even hear me. So quit the shamming. Quit perpetrating. Get real. Come clean. Face yourself. Face your situation. Forgive those who have harmed you. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I know in our heart the people we have not forgiven. Every time their name comes up, something bubbles inside your heart. That's that cancer growing inside of you. That's that cancer, ladies and gentlemen. That's that uh, uh, stroke coming on. That's that heart attack coming on. Because every time you hear their name, you get angry. You get upset. You re wish retaliation on them. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a spirit of unforgiveness. So you can block yourself from getting a stroke. You can block yourself from having a heart attack. You can block that cancer from growing by forgiving those who have hurt you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish your doctor would tell you this. You'll take it if your doctor were telling you, but most doctors don't even know because most doctors do not study spiritual things. 
but there are some doctors who know. Listen to this. Let me share this with you. This will be a blessing to you. I want to share this with you. Unforgiveness is classified in medical books as a disease. According to Dr. Stephen Standiford, chief of surgery at the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, refusing to forgive makes people sick and keeps them that way. With that in mind, forgiveness therapy is now being used to help treat diseases such as cancer. Dr. Standiford explained, it's important to treat emotional wounds or disorders because they really can hinder someone's reactions to the treatments, even someone's willingness to pursue treatment. Of all cancer patients, 61% have forgiveness issues. I'm gonna share that again with you. Of all cancer patients, 61% have forgiveness issues. And of those, more than half are severe, according to research by Dr. Michael Barry in his book, The Forgiveness Project. Harboring these negative emotions, this anger and hatred creates a state of chronic anxiety, he said. Chronic anxiety very predictably produces excess adrenaline and cortisol, which deplete the production of natural killer cells, which is your body's foot soldier in the fight against cancer. Barry said that the first step in learning to forgive is to realize how much we have been forgiven by God. When a person forgives from the heart, which is the gold standard we see in Matthew 18, we find that they are able to find a sense of peacefulness. Quite often, our patients refer to that as a feeling of lightness. This was written by Dr. Barry. Dr. Barry said most people don't realize what a burden, anger, and hatred are until they let them go. Ladies and gentlemen, read Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 is a great chapter on forgiveness. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you bind unforgiveness in your heart, you're binding cancer, sickness, arthritis, disease. You're telling those diseases, go for it. Just destroy me. If you refuse to forgive, if you bind unforgiveness in your heart, if you bind that attitude of unforgiveness in your heart and refuse to forgive people who hurt you, you're saying to cancer, disease, heart trouble, AIDS, whatever the disease is, you're saying, go ahead, eat me up, just destroy me. Ladies and gentlemen, but if you loose unforgiveness to others and you forgive them, no matter what they have done, watch what the Holy Spirit will do as he brings healing and deliverance, as he restores the joy of your salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been talking for about the last 35 minutes about the danger of unforgiveness. God wants us to forgive. God wants us to forgive. He expects us to forgive. Ladies and gentlemen, do not withhold unforgiveness towards anyone, living or dead. No matter what they have done to you, release them today. Let them go. Let them go. Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord 
will not hear me. Hebrews 12, 15 says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Ladies and gentlemen, Psalm 103, 10 to 12 says, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Forgive. Forgive those who have hurt you. Remember, Jesus on the cross forgave you of all of your sins. He's forgiven me of all of my sins. Ladies and gentlemen, don't dishonor the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let his death on the cross be in vain. Don't have to stand before the Almighty God and be condemned to the lake of fire because we refuse to forgive others. Pastor Carter, once saved, always saved, right? Ladies and gentlemen, my answer to this is God will keep those who are truly saved. But God is not a man that he should lie. If God knows you have unforgiveness, bitterness in his heart, how can you call yourself a Christian? How can you be a follower of God? How can the very nature of God be in you? How can the Holy Spirit have any freedom to operate in you if you're full of hatred and anger and bitterness to someone else? So forgive them. Take that list out that you wrote earlier. You don't have to show it to anybody. Take that list up. Take that list up. Now, tear it. Tear it up. Or burn it. Or crumble it up. Destroy it. Tell everybody on that list, I forgive you. Tell God, I forgive everyone on my list. I harbor no bitterness in my heart towards anybody, living or dead. Let's pray. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. We give thanks to you for this message today. This message of freedom and deliverance as you've taught us about the danger of unforgiveness. Lord, help us. Help us to forgive anyone and everyone who has ever hurt us in any way, whether they are living or dead. We forgive them as an act of our will. We forgive them. We release them unto you. And we thank you, Father. And Father, forgive us for harboring unforgiveness. Cleanse us of all iniquity. Now, Lord, do your mighty work in the lives of your people. Stretch forth your mighty hand, Lord God, and heal and heal. Heal and deliver. Go down into Florida. Heal my friend Larry. Go up into Connecticut. Heal my friend Andy. Go into uh, Illinois. Heal Emma Williams. Go into the West Coast. Heal Crystal. Go into Kenya, heal Bishop Elijah. Go into the Caribbean and heal there all over the world. Stretch forth your mighty hand, Lord God, and heal in the lives of every listener. We bless you, Father, and we thank you. And we like to close out with uh, giving you an opportunity, wherever you are, whoever you are. If you've not been born again, you can be born again. Bible says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so we offer you this opportunity in the name of Jesus to be born again by the Spirit of God. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the new birth. But if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So make that confession now and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life and save you. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Hey, we're going to close out uh, with our Facebook family. And Facebook family, if you want to uh, connect with me, please do so. Any questions you have about this message today, any way I can help you connect with me on Facebook. We thank God for you. And for our family uh, on the other channels, we ask that you uh, stay right where you are. Stay right where you are, and after we disconnect from the recording, we'd like to 
I'll entertain any questions you may have. We're thankful to see our friend Larry Cooper, my homeboy from Coatesville, Pennsylvania, all the way from Florida online with us. Cooper, so good to see you. Uh, happy to see Tammy Nichols. Happy to see you, Wes, Matty Saul, Jen Ryder, Andy McBride, so many of our friends on board today. So we praise God. So we ask that you stay on, unmute your phones. Let's chat, chew, let's have a little, little chit chat. We just thank God and we praise God. We praise God. Thank you, Lord. 